Let me introduce you to Jose Cruninho. What is this? Any relation to Mourinho is unclear, but the goals and management are similar. Getting sacked to receive massive payout. I'm thinking too far ahead. The ambition is to win a Champions League title with a Portuguese side within eight seasons. On Twitch, we chose his team. It went from these five, down to three, then a runoff between Santa Clara and Boa Vista, and for most of the vote, it seemed like the Benfica looking badge would be the destination. Then out of nowhere, Boa Vista made the most incredible comebacks, and in the last second, was chosen. Meaning, that is where everything begins. Now the club with the checkered kits were once a very competitive team. They even made the UEFA Cup semi-final in 2003, the same year Mourinho won his. However, no trophy since 2001, but like we said, the loyalties aren't entirely tied down to this team. If there's an opportunity to go to the big boys and it's a clear step up, all that has to be said is, do it. The introduction to the squad could have been better. I guess they don't respect his past playing career. This season would begin in the Allianz Cup against Maritimo. What the f- Alright, well, maybe we can come back? Please, no. Oh my, we scored an own goal in the first game?! Not an ideal start, but an equalizer would be found and the match was won on penalties. <gasps> Another win in the Allianz Cup followed, setting the team up in the group stage. Yeah, this cup has a group stage after a knockout stage. Due to the lack of finances and being owned by the ever so controversial Gerard Lopez, the only transfers were loans. That led to some guys leaving to get these across the line. Into the club was Bruno Rodriguez, who for the most part is a solid center defender and at least had more pace than Yabi Garcia. The other was Vasco Sosa from Porto, and with a 500k clause to purchase, this could be one that lasts beyond the season. On to the beginning of the league campaign, because of being inspired by bus drivers such as Mourinho, the default formation was going to be a 5-back. In the back pocket, a more attacking version would be established. With the opener at Estoril, unlike the Allianz Cup, the beginning was in the checkered shirt's favor as Raul Silva got sent off in the fourth minute. So let's introduce you to Gustavo Sawyer. He would make an incredible impact scoring a brace. For a side like this, he's out of this world, and you'll be hearing a lot more about him. The second match was a Twitch chat derby with Santa Clara, resulting in a defeat. I'm sure Boa Vista wasn't the wrong choice. Who the hell is Bizella? The beginning of the season was tough, as we faced Braga, who are the best Portuguese team outside the big three. It was nil-nil until Braga scored too late, giving us the L. Following that, despite Vasco Sosa scoring his first goal for the club, Pondela would strike back with two, giving us another defeat. It can't get worse, right? I prefer really not to... Um... Not to speak. The database of this save is from the 2022 winter transfers, so while in-game Darwin Nunez was sold to Newcastle, Benfica was still looking good. However, that meant a striker they would have in another universe wasn't there, and instead was with Boa Vista. Peter Moose is his name, and he's a classic target forward with a little bit of pace to him. On loan from Slavia Prague with a 3 million option to buy, he would open the scoring in the 8th minute. Benfica then decide to wake up, with Rodonjic getting a goal in the 17th minute and assisting the fraud Seferovic in the 31st. You can see where this is going. Wait, wait, wait. Pause champ. Let's go. Peter Musa. Gustavo. In behind to Musa for his third. Let's go. Peter Musa with a hat trick in the first half to Nathan. Nathan to Musa. He's open on top of the box. Vasco Sousa makes a four. What's going on? I don't know. We're, we've got four goals. Benfica are in the mud. The coach's voice was going to get a great video in a few years' time. Until the inevitable. The counterattack now for Benfica. Nemanja gets in behind. No way he scores this. Oh, no. No! Are you kidding? That's tough. And the club was not in a good spot. Whenever you are in a situation like this, a good recommendation is to have a team meeting before a game you think you can win. With Gil Vicente in the Allianz Cup next, seemed like a great time. So in the dynamics, you go to the team meeting, tell the team that they can turn things around, and hopefully, you click the right choice, and the morale improves. That was needed because the form went our way. A win came against Gil Vicente, Morey Renzi gave us a late scare, while Fama Licao was comfortable. Pasta Ferro did stop the winning in the league, causing another bump in the road. Despite positivity in the Tassa de Portugal third round, a Maritimo draw occurred after, and Nakajima's Portimonense brought back the L. In big part to the 40-year-old goalkeeper Bracali, who was doing something. 11th after 11 matches, which isn't ideal when all the sides around you have a few games in hand. The league season in Portugal and what lineup works the best was tough to figure out. At some points, you got hot like how the side did in November with all their matches including 3 league wins. That saw Peter Musa score 3 and get 2 goals in the Taça de Portugal victory against the 2nd division Portuguese side after extra time. December in the league was once again cold. These inconsistent performances can be best compared to one of our players, Rozo the Bozo. 
Jackson Perozo is a promising Ecuadorian left-footed center back with a couple flaws. He can have great performances as he'd showcase across the campaign, but he'd also have his moments where he'd look like a complete bozo. Five league games in December, and a win versus Belenunch was the only positive. Granted, Porto and Sporting were two of those losses, but losing the Twitch derby again was too much. Something needed to happen in January. That something was the outs amounting to over 500k. Did anyone get signed with that? Not permanently, because of the uncertainty that Gerard Lopez would give the club at the end of the season. However, there was one loan. Oui, bien sûr. Looking back personally, Football Manager 2014 was my first ever FM game, and my first successful save was with Newcastle. Ben Arfa was an absolute baller for me in that save, along with Kuja Chal and Luke de Jong. Unfortunately, that save got corrupted, but the memories still live on. 8 FMs later, Ben Arfa has seen some better days, but he added more depth to the Shadow Striker role. In the month, the results were back to hot as Bizel were defeated 3 0, George Jesus' Estoril were defeated in the Tasa de Portugal, Tondela was unfortunately a draw, but Benfica at home? But here we go, Gustavo Sawyer. Far post. Let's go! What is that keeping by the Greek man? They've not had a shot on target so far. Very nice, very nice. Oh, Hamache whips it in. Musa! Guarantees the win! Clearly, these two guys were the best players as Musa became the third top scorer in the league with 19 goals and over 30 in all competitions, while Gustavo Sawyer had 9 to go along with his 11 assists. The excitement wasn't done yet because the Allianz Cup was more than some preseason tournament that Spurs won years ago. I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> but you didn't have to say it. I mean, good lord. Instead, it's more comparable to England's Carabao Cup, but it's a unique competition. The four biggest Portuguese sides are in each of the groups, with the expectations of them making the semi-finals. Porto was the mentioned big team opponent following a Gil Vicente victory, so this would determine who would go through. Nine days prior though, there was a dress rehearsal. It was in the league, and with Bovisa also being in the city of Porto, we got ourselves a fierce local matchup called the Invicta Derby. From what I could gather, Boavista haven't defeated Porto since 2007. That wouldn't change in the league match, as despite fighting hard to come back from a 2-0 deficit with Gustavo Sawyer and Portoloni Vasco Sosa scoring, an 86-minute Evan Nielsen goal would seal the fate for now. Because in the Allianz Cup, Musa would score first, but Danny Loder would equalize. Had some inconsistent performances, but... Oh wait, Musa! Musa, oh my gosh! Perozo, no way! A bozo is not a bozo today! Jackson Perozo with the strike of the century! Oh, Makuta's found! Let's go! Sporting Club de Portugal would face the same fate as Porto. Despite Tondela losing to Estoril, they defeated Sporting and finished first on goal difference. They'd be our semi final opponents, but with a solid backline performance and unexpected goals coming from our defenders, Final awaited. The final was staged at the Estadio Municipal de Leiria, which the club Union de Leiria plays in. A matchup with Benfica is obviously difficult. However, Musa would step up first. We got a free kick, Hamache. Musa! 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 Unfortunately, Gonzalo Ramos would equalize eight minutes after halftime, and with extra time not existing in this competition, penalties separate the sides from a trophy. Get it started. Pino first. Scores. Musa, our target man. Our goal scorer. Denied. Mar Jean Mario. Oh, how did you not save that? Gustavo now. He scores his. Rafa up next. He stopped. Okay, we're still alive. Nathan now. Nate. Nathan. Can he make it equal? <gasps> A goal will seal the victory for Benfica. <laughs> Disappointment. Inconsistency in the campaign led to an 8th place finish. The hot and cold months were a real thing. February and March sucked. Then April was a recovery, with all wins except against Sporting. Then the last two matches of the season against Porto and Belenenge were else. It's pretty easy to explain the inconsistency though when you have Ben Arfa at the club of this type of form. What can you expect? Nevertheless, there's a reason that the Tasha de Portugal was left for last. Leaving off after an Estoril victory which had Bovista's player of the season Thiago Olori, bet you didn't expect to hear that sporting fans, being part of the goals, it was a match won in extra time leading to a two-legged affair with Belenenche, the sad version. This isn't the Belenenche that was once competitive in Portugal, no, that one was in the fourth tier. This was the fraudulent version. If you look at the Wikipedia page, they were founded in 2018. And in the See Also section, you have Emkin Dons in there. The home tie was one-sided, not on the scoreline as Moose's penalty was the only goal. But heading into the second leg, the stadium must have had like 
by fans. Peter Musa stepped up once again with a brace, sending the club to another cup final. This time, a more glorious one. The Taça de Portugal hasn't been won by Boa Vista since 1997, and with no trophies for 22 years, this final would be special. Not because it was just a final, but because it would be a derby. The Invicta derby in the Taça de Portugal final, which hasn't happened since May 24th, 1992. An incredible occasion for the fans, but a nervous time for the players. Nil nil at halftime isn't the most surprising thing, but what would be shocking is the refereeing. No! Referee, that is bullcrap! And Taremi scores it. What? A penal? What? Musa hit the post twice, there are good chances for the side, I even switched to this abomination of a formation, but with almost 10 to go, 2-0 down. There were a few players that controversially didn't start, including Vasco Sosa. He came on, and as the clock struck 80, Van Arfa found him in a bunch of space to get one back. Sosa would then be influential once again. Oh, but we win it, Gustavo Sawyer. In behind to Vasco. Vasco. In behind to... Let's go! 2-2 two, two. in a matter of two minutes. Penal? Perev gives a penalty! There's justice in this world! Can he make it 3-2 for Boa Vista? No! Yes! Yes! We don't really have much we can do. Musa gets it back. Musa to Morais. Tiago Morais the kid. Shimmy's a little Musa. He seals the deal. We have done it. We are Tasa the Portugal winners. It's probably the best football manager game I've ever had. And we lift the trophy. We're going to the Europa League, boys. Not a bad start to everything. Oh, come on.